I want to uh, discuss uh, our uh, semester project problem, one of them here, and that is uh, ultimately, let's say in Excel, we want to write an Excel spreadsheet that given the coordinates for three vertices of a triangle as shown here, 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 and here, how we would compute the length of the sides and the angles for the triangle. Now, before I jump into that, though, I want to review uh, how we measure angles. Now, if we have an angle, there are usually, uh, we use one of two systems for measuring the size of the angle. So if I draw an angle like this, here's an angle right there. And so how do we measure this angle? Now, the first thing you learn about uh, in school is measuring the angle in degrees. So we might say this is a 30 degree angle or a 20 degree angle or something of that sort. Uh, and we say that if we have a circle, so insert shape circle, if we have a circle, and let me draw some, uh, there is an x-axis and a y-axis on a circle, that on a circle, if we go all the way around the circle, that size of that angle all the way around the circle is 360 degrees. Um, now, if the all the way around the circle is 360 degrees, that's like going all the way to here, going halfway around the circle, what is that? That's 180 degrees. Going a quarter of the way around the circle, let's say to here, that's 90 degrees. So we can measure the angle of a circle using degrees. But another way, and the way used in uh, higher level math, engineering, and science courses often, is to measure the angle in radians. Um, now, if we measure the angle in radians, let me draw a circle for that here. Let me just delete these things. And there, we measure an angle in radians. I'll draw a circle. We have a circle here. Then the angle that goes all the way around the circle, like this, is, is said to be 2 pi radians. So halfway around the circle, from here to here, that's pi radians. Quarter of the way around the circle, let's say right to here, it's pi over 2 radians. So we know if we go all the way around the circle that if we measured it in degrees, that's 360 degrees. So I can say that 360 degrees equals 2 pi radians, or 180 degrees, halfway around the circle, is pi radians, and 90 degrees is pi over 2 radians. Now, the radian has the property that if we know the radius of a circle, so let me draw another, another circle here. If we know the radius of the circle, it's a point from the distance from the center to the perimeter of the circle, call that R, we know the radius of a circle, we can find the length of the arc. Let's say the length of this thing right in here is the length of the arc. We can find that by taking this angle in radians. Let's say theta is, uh, let's say this is pi over 6 radians. We take the angle as measured in radians, multiply by the length of the arc, that gives, or length of the radius, sorry, that gives us the length of the arc. So if this is the arc, I'll call it A for arc, we have the equation that R times theta is equal to A. So indeed, if the angle is pi over 6 radians, let's say the radius is 2, so if R equals 2, 
theta is pi over 6. The length of the arc is 2 pi over 6, or that's equal to pi over 3. So length, this would be however you're using to measure length. So if the radius is 2 feet, then the arc is pi over 6 feet. And pi is uh, approximately equal to 3. Let's say that I call that good enough for government work calculation. So if pi were equal to 3, this is approximately 1 half. So if the radius were 2 feet, the length of the arc would be about a half a foot. Now, this is entirely consistent with how we compute the circumference of a circle. In that, if I have another circle, so here I am drawing the circle, and I know that if I go all the way around the circle, that angle theta is 2 pi, is two pi radians. And if the length of the arc from the center to the perimeter is r, I know that the circumference is going to be the length of this angle, 2 pi, times r. So I have the circumference equals 2 pi r, which is a formula we remember, remember probably from middle school, not before. So now with that as a... Um, uh, reminder of the difference between degrees and radians, I'm going to give you one more formula. And that is, if we have the angle in degrees, how do we convert it to radians? And if we have the angle in radians, how, how do we convert it to degrees? As you might not remember. And the way I do it is I remember this little uh, expression. I say that the I say the angle in degrees is to 360 as the angle in radians is to 2 pi. Now I can also write this as the angle in degrees is to 180 as the angle in radians is to pi. That's just uh, dividing both of these denominators by 2. I get that. Now uh, so what do we have? If I have, or I want to convert degrees to radians, I go in here and say I have a 30 degree angle. So 30 over 180 equals the angle in radians over pi. So I cross multiply the way I solve these kinds of equations. So I say 180r is equal to 30 pi. Divide both sides by 180. And 180 divided by 180 gives me 1. So I have r is equal. What's 30 divided by 180? Cross out the zeros. I get 3 over 18. 3 over 18 is 1 over 6. So I have 1 over 6 times pi or pi over 6. So the angle in radians is pi over 6 radians. Uh, I can use the same equation. If they have the angle in radians, I can find the angle in degrees. So let's say I know that the angle R is pi over 3 radians. So I say D over 180 equals R over pi. And I know R is pi over 3. So then this is equal to pi over 3 divided by pi. The pi's cancel, giving me 1 third. So I have D over 180 is equal to one-third. So I cross multiply, I get 3d equals 180. Well, what times 3 gives me 180? That is 60. So I have c is, d is 60 degrees. So that way I say that pi over 3 radians is equal to 60 degrees, like that. So this is the equation right here. So remember this equation and you should be good on converting degrees to radians and radians back to degrees. Okay, now, let's go on to our problem. And now let me just delete a bunch of this stuff here so I have room in the area around the triangle. Uh, 
Okay, there I am. Now back to the triangle. Okay, now, remember from algebra, if I want to compute the distance of a line, so the, dist the length of this line right here, I look at the, and if I have the coordinates of the endpoints of the line, so what I do there is I take, um, I say this, let's say, let's say I call this angle A and call this side A. I want to compute the length of side A. Side A has a length that's equal to, I take 13 minus 3, so I have A is equal to the square root, or let me write it this way first, say A squared. A squared is equal to 13 minus 3 squared plus 7 minus 11 squared. And I can do this in my head, right? 13 minus 3 is 10, and 10 squared is 100. So this is equal to 100. Um, 7 minus 11 is uh, negative 4. And negative 4 squared is 16. So this is equal to 116. So a squared is equal to 116. Uh, and then I take the square root of 116 uh, to find the length of a. So let me pull up my... Uh, calculator right here. Here's my calculator. Okay, so I want to put in 116, 116, enter. This is a reverse Polish calculator in case you're not familiar. It's not the usual uh, TI format on this calculator. And I do square root and I get 1.077. So A is equal to 1.077. So this equals one point. 077. That's A. Um, now, let me find the length of this side here. I'll say this side is B. Here, let me move this out of the way. So let's say, okay, this side, then along here is going to be B. So here's B. So I have the two sides. Again, I got 13.7 and 2, 3. So I say the B squared. is equal to 13 minus 2 squared, this minus that, plus 7 minus 3 squared, and 13 minus 2 is 11, 11 squared is 121, 7 minus 3 is 4, and 4 squared is 16, so it's 121 plus 16, and that is equal to 137. So b squared is 137. So what does that make B? Go back to my calculator here. 137. Enter. Take the square root. And it's um, Oh, I, I uh, noticed here the 0, 1. I thought there was something wrong with that calculation for A. Let me fix that. So this is 11.7. So B is 11.7. And A, I forgot to take into account, um, I mean, of course, it doesn't make any sense that the square root of 116 is 1 something. This is really 10. So I do this. It's 10.77. Stupid me. Okay, B is 11.7. Now let me compute C right here, that distance right in there. Again, I have the coordinates. So I have C squared is equal to 3 minus 2 squared and then 11 minus 3 plus 11 minus 3 squared. So 3 minus 2 is 1, so this is just equal to 1. And then 11 minus 3 is 8. 8 squared is 64. So C squared is 65. So C is going to be the square root of 65, which you figure is just going to be a tad bigger than 8. So let's look at that. 65, enter, um, square root, and it's 8.06. Is C. So C equals... 
8.06 right there. So now I now have the lengths A, B, and C. So let me write them down here. I have I have A equals, I'll write in what that is in a minute, B is equal to, B is equal to 11.7, C is equal to 8.06, and A is 10.77. So these are the lengths of the three sides of my triangle. Now, you may remember here, I wrote them down here so you can see them. Let's say A is 10.77, B is 11.6, 11.7, C is 8.06, just like that. Come on. Okay. Now, you may re vaguely remember in geometry that there's a relationship. Um, uh, we look at the longest side. The longest side is always opposite the biggest angle. The shortest side is always opposite the shortest angle. So if you remember that, if you know the lengths of the three sides, you also then have some idea what the relationship is going to be between the angles A, B, and C. Indeed, we should have that A is bigger than both B and C, uh, A is bigger than B, and B is bigger than C. That's the way this should work, shouldn't it? Okay, let's just look at the triangle for a minute. This is angle C. Say that A is bigger than B. Now, um, you know, they're almost, they're similar, so it might be a little hard to tell. Um, and then B, which is the, the side here along the bottom, this one right here, B is bigger than C. But all three sides are relatively close to one another. It's not really a skewed uh, triangle. Okay, now the next thing we're going to need, and I'll just give you the expressions here uh, at the end. The next thing we're going to need, so, is we're going to need the law of sines and the law of cosines. The law of sines says that the sine of angle A divided by the length of side A equals the sine of angle B divided by the length of side B equals the sine of angle C divided by the length of side C. The law of cosines tells us that C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of the angle between A and B, which is going to be angle C. Uh, but we, we can write down two more equations that also satisfy the law of cosines. For example, we can say that a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared. And, uh, and we subtract um, minus 2bc cosine of a. And we can say that c squared, this is side c, not angle c, um, we can say, uh, okay, not c squared either, b squared. b squared is equal to a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine of angle b. So we're going to be using the law of sines and the law of cosines to help us solve our problem of finding the three angles.